So people often ask me, Harley, you do a lot of reviews on bikes. What do you think is the best bike for 2013? Now, I'm not paid by a giant or anyone. I actually, I actually don't even own a giant currently, but if I was got in the market, I would get one based on the current data. For 2013, the giant TCR Advanced smokes the competition. Now, what I really enjoy about this video I'm gonna promote in a second is that giant have done their homework. They're like, this is the numbers we gotta reach, and we gotta go past that. So check out this video, it's from Giant, and again, I'm not paid by Giant to promote this, this is just my objective, personal preference putting it out there. But let the data steer you in the right direction. Check this out. Hi, my name is John Swanson. I'm the Global Category Manager for the On-Road Bikes here at Giant. What we're going to talk about today are a couple of different things. One, we're going to talk about the control that we have in the manufacturing process. We're the only major manufacturer in the world who has control over their product from conception all the way through every level of engineering, prototyping, testing, and manufacturing all the way to delivery to your door. The other thing we're going to talk about are some of the tests that we do. We have three tests we're going to go over today. One is a measurement, the other one is about torsional stiffness, the other one is about bottom bracket stiffness. What all of these tests relate to are the ride characteristics for the performance on-road bikes that we produce here at Giant. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to show you something we've never shown you before. I'm going to show you all the results in detail and it's going to list how we stack up against our relevant competitors in the world. So as you know, a lot of these tests are not new. They're industry standard tests. But one of the things that's a little different that you'll see in our testing versus everybody else's testing, aside from some of the proprietary methods that we're using, like using the fork versus a steel bar, is that in everybody else's testing numbers, we're not included. Giant bikes are not there. The reason why is because the giant bikes are superior. And the other guy's marketing departments can't figure a way around that superiority, so they don't include us at all. What we did is we actually went out and purchased all of our relevant competitors' frames. And when we bought these bikes, we took them all to our engineering department where they are then weighed. And what we weighed were equivalent sizes, full production paint and graphics, and all the relevant bits, meaning derailleur hangers, water bottle bolts, cable guides. We took all of those together and we added in 250 grams for a seat post in the case of a bike that's not an ISP like the TCR Advanced SL. And by doing that, it levels the playing field. The first set of data we're going to look at is the weight data. As you can see, the top of the list is the TCR Advanced SL. This is a medium weight frame, full production CNG, all the aluminum bits with an uncut ISP and an uncut fork. It comes in at 1300 grams. As you move down the list, the weights get heavier. Second on the list is 15 grams heavier. But then as you get down towards the bottom of the list, even as you start to get into halfway down the list, the weights exponentially increase. The last bike on the list is well over a kilogram heavier than a TCR Advanced SL. That's a thousand grams heavier for a frame, fork, and seat post. That's insane. So obviously weight is a key component when we're talking about any performance level product, but it is by far the least important when you're talking about a performance level road bike. Stiffer is always better. You can have the lightest bike in the world, but if it rides like a blob of jello, it doesn't make any difference at all. What you want are key performance characteristics, one in torsional stiffness, one in bottom bracket stiffness. Your torsional stiffness, those are your steering inputs. When you're railing through a corner at 50 miles an hour, you wanna make sure that your front wheel and your rear wheel are gonna follow the same line or else you've got big problems. Your bottom bracket stiffness is all about your pedaling efficiency. You want whatever you put into those pedals to turn into forward motion. The stiffer the bike is in the bottom bracket, the better you are in terms of efficiency. So the next test we're gonna talk about is the torsional stiffness test. How we administer this test is we lock the back end of the bike into a steel fixture so it cannot move. We also use the proprietary manufacturer supplied fork when we do this test. We measure the deflection at the end of the fork in Newton meters. Now this test is gonna differ from some of the other testing methodology that you'll see in the cycling industry. The main difference is the fact that we use the manufacturer supplied fork versus using a steel bar that some of the other manufacturers will use. The main problem with using a steel bar is that it's not realistic. You don't ride a frame with a steel bar. You're riding a frame and a manufacturer's proprietary fork. By using the fork along with the frame, we get a more realistic sense of how a bike will actually corner. 
The bottom line behind torsional stiffness is all about cornering stability. It doesn't have anything to do with weight, it doesn't have anything to do with bottom bracket stiffness. It's all about confidence inspiring handling when you're ripping through the fastest corner you can possibly think of. So the next set of data we're going to look at here are the torsional stiffness results. As you can see from the chart, the advanced SL ISP bike absolutely crushes it. But there are two other things I really want you to look at. One is the difference between an advanced SL ISP bike and an advanced SL seat post bike. Both these bikes come out of the same molds, they use the same construction techniques, they use the same carbon fiber content, and they have the same purpose and focus. But as you can see, by integrating the ISP into the entire structure, you gain a tremendous amount in terms of torsional stiffness. The other thing I want you to focus on is where our advanced level TCR sits. The, our mid-level product absolutely crushes a lot of our competitors' high-end product. That is directly related to the fact that we have control over every piece of the manufacturing puzzle all the way through from conception all the way through to delivery. Nobody else can do that, hence nobody else can hit those results. So the next test we're going to talk about is the bottom bracket stiffness test. And how we set up and administer this test is the bike is locked into a steel fixture at a 10 degree angle. The rear dropouts and the fork dropouts are locked into the steel fixture so they cannot move. We then put in a steel fixture which simulates crank load. The crank arm is set down at a 45 degree angle which is the highest point of power in any given pedal stroke. We apply pressure to the end of that crank arm which then shows us the deflection in the bottom bracket which we measure in newton meters. So what does all this mean? When we take all these measurements, what we're doing is we're showing how stiff and how efficient the powertrain area is within a given bike. So here are the bottom bracket stiffness results. And one of the first things you'll notice is that we're not number one, we're actually number two. And we're okay with that. The reason why we're okay with that is that there's a certain point in which it doesn't matter anymore from bottom bracket stiffness. As a human, we are only so strong. You can only flex a bike so much. If you look at the top five of this stiffness chart and the results that we have here, that top five is beyond the normal limits of a typical rider. Anybody who could buy this bike won't flex the bike any more than what's shown in the top five. If you want any more information on this, for more detail, please go to the Giant website. You can download everything that we've just talked about, testing methodology, the weight charts, the stiffness charts, both torsional and bottom bracket. Thanks for your time. So quite interesting video, wasn't it? I like how Giant's basically giving everyone the middle finger and said, hey guys, these are our bikes, this is the data. Let the results be shown and known. So I think it's going to be great that they're creating, they're raising the bar. Again, Giant's raising the bar again. Pedaling stiffness, cornering stiffness, and weight. The three most important things for a road bicycle. I think it's fantastic that Giant's using social media to push this message out there because it's going to get other manufacturers all stirred up and go, oh! It's not 1994 anymore, it's 2013, and social media, things like Strava, are changing the game. So Giant's really just raising the bar, attacking off the front and saying, hey guys, can you keep up, or are you going to get dropped? Now that's the question. It's going to be good to see what other manufacturers do now, after 2013, how Giant's just smashed the competition to pieces, and it's just going to be, you know, all the jigsaw is going to have to be reformed. It's crazy how it's, it's in cycling it's so much on fashion versus function. But I think what Giant's doing now is they're promoting the function more than fashion. If you're into cool paint jobs and you know, heritage and all that stuff, that's fine. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. But personally, I like a bike that's got performance. Function over fashion. If it looks cool, that's a bonus. But I want performance paramount. That's my first priority in a bike. So if I, people ask me, Harley, would you ride a Giant? Fucking oath I would. If I was in the market, if I had to buy a new bike today, I'd definitely grab a TCR Advanced SL. I'd go the ISP as well. That's my personal preference. Based on the data, test ride, then decide. Thanks for watching. Post your comments and questions down below. We'll see you on the road.